Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of FuelMade's D2C Inspiration Series, where we're partnering up with experts to talk to the founders and marketers of leading brands. I'm Tina. I lead marketing here at FuelMade, and we're a Shopify agency that specializes in custom development and design, conversion rate optimization, and Klaviyo email and SMS marketing. Here with me is Ashley, our Director of Digital Operations, Kelly, our UX and UI designer, and Jimmy, the Director of Digital Marketing at Turby Twist. Thank you so much for joining us, Jimmy. Oh, thanks for having me. I'm glad to be here. Awesome. Um, before we dive into things, why don't you all give some context into who you are and what your role is? And Ashley, let's start with you. Sure thing. I'm Ashley, and I have been with Fuelmade for almost six years, six years next month. And so I head up everything on the website of things. That's my day-to-day, -day. client relationship, team building, all that. Awesome. And Kelly, what about you? Uh, so I'm Kelly. I'm a UI UX designer. Um, I've been a film aide for about a year and a half-ish now, um, but I've been designing professionally for almost 20 years. The last 10 of them in interactive. Awesome. And what about you, Jimmy? Hi, I'm Jimmy. Um, I head up digital marketing and e-commerce at Turby Twist, um, which is the original super absorbent hair towel. Um, it's a family business that my sister started and uh, I've been taking them into the new age of digital and uh, direct to consumer, uh, the direct to consumer channel. Amazing, thank you so much. Um, before we jump into the Q and A, Ashley, why don't you give us some context into what this project was, how it started, and how it normally works with Fuel Made clients? Yeah, for sure. So with all Fuel Made clients, and, and of course with Jimmy, what we first do is we start everything with strategy. So we kick off a call by sending. Jimmy a survey that says, hey, tell us everything that's in your brain, why you're here, what your pain points are, what you love, what you love about your site, what you hate about your site, what you love about other sites. Um, and so it's kind of just like get in the client's brain so we understand where they're coming from and kind of what brought them here. And then we have Erin, our strategist, and she goes at that from a data perspective. So she's researching into Google Analytics, Shopify Analytics, um, heat maps, like hot jar and things of the sort. And then we, we sort of marry those two things together and create a baseline strategy for the duration of the project. And from there, Kelly takes over. Amazing. Um, I'll kick us off here with the Q&A. So Jimmy, um, you obviously just redesigned and relaunched a brand new website for Turby Twist, um, which focuses a lot on elevated branding and um, a stronger user experience. Can you tell us a bit more about what led you to take on this project in the first place? Oh yeah, well, it's been in my head since I started work here. Um, I created the first Shopify store for us myself. Um, I was just kind of learning. I knew we needed one. I just, you know, with my limited design knowledge, put one together just so that people, when they landed on turbytwist.com could buy something. But knowing that like, I am not a web designer. I like am very new to this. So, you know, I did the best that I could. But then, I mean, it took about a year and a half, but once we were finally able to, you know, justify spending to recreate the website, um, there were so many things that needed fixed and so many, you know, pain points and the user flow was, you know, it worked, but it wasn't really easy to get around the site to discover more of our products. Um, so I found Fuel Made, thank God. And, um, like they were saying, we just kind of started at the, with the strategy of, you know, what is the intention of this site? How are people going to use it? Um, and, you know, we really just made it what it should have been at first. Um, you know, I was going to say, I'm happy that I took baby steps because now I feel like so much more comfortable with it. But um, yeah, we just, we needed it. I think every, every brand today um, could benefit from a really well thought out, well designed website. That's awesome. Um, if you, if, if someone were to ask you, what is good web de website design and why, what would you say? Well, first of all, everybody is shopping on their phones or using their phones first. So we knew right away that, and in my opinion too, the site has to look great and work great on your phone. So that is number one. And number two, I think people have to be able, if your intention is to sell things, they have to be able to buy it in like two or three clicks and it shouldn't take them a long time to get there. Um, 
so that was one of our main focuses was just to make it if somebody knows exactly what they want they can buy it in a couple clicks if they're not sure all of the relevant information is easy to find um, even on a phone yeah yeah no i think all of us as consumers ourselves can probably have probably been to that point of frustration too and you know the brands that have really good elevated designs are truly the ones that stick out and that we continue to return to and so that kind of leads into like my next question which is why do you think a strong website design is so important for e-commerce brands today well you know it's funny it became more apparent to me after this whole experience of redesigning um, because we just had no standards for images for the layout. I was just kind of expanding it as I went. Um, and it's really all about those little details that create a good experience for the customer. And we've seen our conversion rate skyrocket since implementing that. Um, because when you go to a website, you want to trust it, you want it to feel like this is you know, for our brand, this is Turby Twist. This isn't just, you know, you know, uh, somebody selling these products. This is the brand speaking. And if you're a big brand, like I'm lucky to have, um, you need to have all your T's or lower J's dotted and T's crossed. <laughs> Wait, I, let me, I want to ask a follow-up on that. We, you kind of touched on this, but when you decided to, to kind of take on this endeavor of this new website, what were the main goals you were hoping to achieve? The main goal, the first main goal was to improve conversion rate. Like I said, like the, the shop worked, people were buying, but we were getting all this organic traffic from our blog posts mm -hmm. um, and our conversion rate just wasn't meeting, you know, benchmarks. So I knew that had to improve and I knew it had to do with, you know, the design of the site. Um, and so the overhaul really, it was like, as soon as we published the new theme or the, you know, the new design, mm -hmm. people started buying a lot more. So um, I think that would be, you know, the main data point that I was interested in uh, focusing on. Yeah. And were there any sort of pain points that you can recall if you go, go way back in time to when we started this, what were the key pain points that you were trying to alleviate? Um, so it was really difficult to get around our menu. Like I had a top menu um, that would stay with the user that went to all of our products. But it was since we have different constructions of the hair towels, we have different sizes. Um, you know, the way I had it built out, it wasn't easy to get back and forth between things. So like the main thing was probably the menu. Mm -hmm. um, and second of all, because I had kind of uh, stitch this site together, you know, when we're updating different products, like I just kept running into issues. I was working with an outdated theme, you know, there were just all these kind of technical problems that I had created for myself, but, um, you know, that was becoming, as we were growing bigger and bigger, it was becoming more apparent that these drawbacks were gonna, you know, continue to happen and probably get worse. Yeah. Got it. And we'll probably touch on those a little bit more too when we get into chatting with Kelly. I do have, we mentioned, you know, you sell in store. So a, a, a good portion of what you do is really in store brick and mortar. So how do you feel like elevating your online presence will have a, like, will impact your, your in-store presence? Um, well, I feel like even when people are shopping, say at Walmart or Target, a lot of the times you'll pull out your phone, whether it's to price check or see more options or whatnot. And it needs to have this seamless experience for the consumer so they can, you know, that everything jives with itself. And that just really creates the customer confidence. It, it just makes it an easy and uh, straightforward experience. And we have, we've seen in all of our channels, uh, a substantial uptick since like, um, unifying our brand presence that is really, you know, you can't ignore it. So it, it really means a lot, even if you are in store, um, you definitely need to have a, what do you want to say, like a consistent brand image and one that just has all those, you know, like I said, lower J's dotted. <laughs> yeah. So that cohesion has been really important. Mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. So you kind of touched on this a bit. Um, before and even with like your response just now about the importance of like consumer trust. 
So I'm really curious to ask, like, what should other brands be considering when trying to build more trust with their shoppers on their website? And do you think design's a big part of that? Well, design definitely is a part, like, you know, same thing if you send in a resume with a typo or, <laughs> you know, or something like that. The user, if they land on a 404 page or like, you know, things aren't popping up, it just kind of makes you feel like maybe this product also isn't going to live up to your expectation if the site has some glaring mm -hmm. issues. Um, so it's really important to invest in that site. And even, you know, if you're going to buyers at retail stores, if that's your goal, they're going to go on your website and they're going to look around. So, you know, you want to make sure you have your uh, kitchen in order before you have guests over. <laughs> exactly. Um, I love it. Kelly, like as the one who led kind of this design strategy for Turby Twist, like what, I guess, what was the strategy behind all of the updated UX? Yeah, so we used the research that was done by Aaron, our strategist again, um, to identify all these op like optimization opportunities. So for example, like Jimmy mentioned, you know, one of them was updating the navigation to follow some more expected UI patterns and allow users to quickly see like the scope of your product offerings. So that was a key goal in our redesign. Um, also, we needed to elevate the UI to compete with the newcomers in the space, um, but still maintain that like the same fun, friendly aesthetic that is the Turby Twist brand. Like it had to meet the bar that was set by those competitors and still the kind of trust that you expect from a website uh, for a nationally known brand, but still mesh with the packaging design because it is there is that brick and mortar component as well. So we kind of had that two pronged um, deep UX problem and uh, a UI component. Um, I think we were still, we were able to do that and maintain the spirit of the Turby Twist brand, um, made sure to communicate the brand story and the design. A lot of the landing pages, we have um, these brand content sections, and lifestyle interstitials spread throughout the page. Um, their entry points into the conversion funnel as well, but it kind of breaks it up with those product sections. Thanks, yes. Kelly. So one thing I know that was in your strategy a lot, Kelly, and the, and the origin of this, Jimmy, was in the survey that you filled out. And we talked a lot about the importance of product education. So Jimmy, for you, can you tell me kind of the background on why product education was so important as we tackled the new redesign? Yeah, for sure. And this is something that, you know, has been kind of my endeavor, you know, in my current role is this brand has been around since the 90s. And a lot of our customers think that's just the brand, like that one product that they bought back in the day on QVC is the whole thing. And we have so much more. Um, so it's just, uh, you know, our site, we were having some issues with people buying the cotton one and expecting microfiber, or they were buying microfiber and expecting cotton. And that's the like, you know, in the survey, I was saying, I really need a good way to story tell um, which one you want, which one you think you want, you know, just whenever you're not, whenever it's not in front of you, because obviously I wish we had a Turby Twist store, but there's nowhere you can go and like feel it and see, you know, this is the one I want. So um, we had to find a way to um, get people to the right place. And that was through product education and just adding all these little modules of here's what the microfiber one does. Here's what the cotton one does. Here's, you know, so they can make an educated choice. Um, otherwise, you really have to know exactly what you want. And a lot of the times we we're finding our customers thought they did, but didn't. It's very common. So it's a very, very common scenario for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, I love the way that it's done on the website now with like educating between the two different materials. And I know just talking to Ashley and Kelly that that was a big pain point. And Kelly, you did such a great job with that. And so I would love if you could share some advice on like how other brands can be educating about these things in like a quick and concise way. Because I think you said the best quote to me the other day of like, people don't actually read things. <laughs> right. Yeah. Spoiler alert. We just skim. Um, people's patience online is, is pretty thin. So you, you really do have to uh, make sure you communicate in a way that works for the way that we're reading. Um, and ensuring that that information can be found um, on the right product and the right point, and they can be confident in that decision that kind of ties back into instilling trust. Um, so oh, that we ended up doing. 
Pardon? That reminds me of one thing before on the old version, I had like a thousand word product um, description. That was, was really, really good, good for, for SEO, SEO, at least I, I thought. But, but it, like very early on in the process, Kelly, I think you were just kind of like, like you said, nobody's going to read this. Like this is just words, you know, and it's going to get people confused and whatnot. So the first thing you did was put them on those accordions, make sure they're all little snippets, digestible pieces. But yeah, I had like this huge huge uh diatribe about the derby twist <laughs> it was it was relevant content and it had the iconography which i feel is a really good scanning uh, opportunity as well we just kind of made it to the point where you could choose your own adventure really quickly as opposed to having to read all of it mm -hmm. um and then kind of uh that sort of turned into also that comparison module so we could highlight the difference between cotton and microfiber uh, we repeated that pattern on multiple pages. So um, if you started out on one and then after you compare the specs, you realized you needed another, having a natural path to switch to quickly switch over was also a big part of our strategy as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and those That's accordions, cool. Kelly, too, you really like you created a really strong hierarchy in terms of what's the information that people need right off the bat. And even like what's the information that people need as soon as they land on the page. So you did a really strong, strong job there of, of creating that hierarchy as well. Yeah, I think you really do need to like identify your content hierarchy early on. Um, like you said, Jimmy, like keep it short and to the point because um, people are going to want to scan. Um, so we have that like quick look near the CTA, but you don't have to be afraid of long form content either. And we do have that in the, the product page as well, kind of past that comparison table, we can get a bit, um, we can get deeper just to kind of make sure we're breaking that up into sections and we don't make it feel overwhelming. Mm -hmm. So Jimmy, if you could give one piece of advice, just one or two, if you have two, that's fine, to <laughs> other e-com brands out there that are considering redesigning their website, what would you say? Um, I would say no everything that you want to build into it. I, I mean, that might seem overwhelming, but like when we were investing all of this, we wanted to make sure we had our, you know, our reviews were already locked down with Yacht Post. So we just need to integrate, like know what your site's going to be built with yeah. so that you can bake that in. Because as I was learning, you know, in the first part of our site was adding all of these different apps and plugins and all of that can really junk up your site. Mm -hmm. So um, I would have a really good handle on that first before maybe embarking on a redesign um, because otherwise, you know, you're going to get this really pretty product. And when you go back in and add in all of your stuff, it's just going to, you know, <laughs> kind of junk it up. Yeah. So I think that's a really practical piece of advice is to, um, you know, understand the full scope. And like you said, when we started, we were just kind of thinking, you know, why are people on this site? You know, what are they going to be interested in? Um, have an idea of that because as much as you guys are, you know, genius wizards <laughs> with your design, I think, you know, you really have to be able to give something for you, for, you know, a company to go on. So, yeah. you know, you can't just say, I want a new website, do it for me. You might get something, but you're not going to be as happy as you could have been. Right, really having that collaborative approach to it. And that is, that's, I mean, that approach makes things so successful because then we know, you know, we know what you need. We know what you already have. I'm glad you brought up, like you did this on your own first, right? And so you have this sort of suite as it were of apps and things. And part of what we did was say, okay, what do you have that's an app right now that we could build natively? We can kind of remove some cruft code and clean things up for you. That's a key part of what we do too. But yeah, that's when it comes to, success of, of kind of that collaboration relationship that we're talking about. It really is you knowing what you need, you knowing what your pain points are, and then us having, you know, the history, the expertise and the strategy to, to back that up and partner with you. We love, love, love this project. It was an absolute delight. So <laughs> it, you got, it even went over and above because I was going to say like, now we have the filter by color, filter by size things, and those weren't even on my radar. So that's another thing like, yeah, you're going to have your idea, but you're going to come out with so much more than you might have even been looking for. Um, I'm in love with the, the yeah. filters. <laughs> They're so good. And, the, and that was really, I mean, that was a data thing, right? Like we could see 
we could see what people are, are looking for, what they are, what they were expecting really, and maybe mm-hmm. not getting. And so, yeah, that, that was an offshoot of that. So yeah, you always get little surprises, little bonuses <laughs> as it were. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I just uh, launched our new hero for after holiday and oh, it just made it so easy because I, now I have my Photoshop template. So I have my main page hero template. I've got my product thumbnail template. Like everything is set up with the right colors. It was just, it's made my life so much easier. So thank you. It's Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'd love to like throw that question at you too, Kelly, if that's okay about like what your advice would be for brands that are redesigning their website. Oh, (laughs) I wasn't prepped for that question. (laughs) Um, No, I mean, kind of what Jimmy said is, you know, you, you do have to kind of know, you need to know your brand and your business before going into approach it because you can't just kind of come to a designer and be like, I would like a new site. (laughs) <laughs> hand it off. Um, it is very much a collaborative process and that was why this this was such a fun project for us is because Jimmy you are very hands-on and involved in it and that is what ends up making things more successful in the end awesome that's really good advice for other brands out there um Jimmy thank you so much for joining us today we appreciate your time and learning about your story and getting to hear the strategies and same with you Kelly thank you so much both of you for sharing your insights for having me (laughs) before we wrap up though uh where can people learn more about turby twist or go purchase it oh well you can always go to turbytwist.com or (laughs) amazon.com slash turby twist but if you want to go old school and buy it in the store we're in walmart target alta sally beauty cbs and always qvc we've got special deals at qvc i think ashley got one of her um natural leopard ones there I did it's my favorite I almost wore it for this and I thought it's probably a bit much Ashley (laughs) yeah anywhere beauty products are sold for the most part perfect um for anyone that's still listening in here we have an ebook that you can download for free and it actually features all of the brands that we're talking to throughout the series but it actually dives in even deeper because it shares metrics tactics strategies and so much more. Um, I'll link to it in the comments and you can get it there and we'll see you at our next episode. Thank you so much again, Jimmy and Kelly. Thank you.